Hello everyone and welcome to the World Explorer podcast. If you don't know what this is, well, it's simple. We take a prompt and we make an entire world out of it. My name is Liz Casey and as always, I'm joined by our prompt master, Isaac. Hello. I feel like that was the smoothest intro I've ever done and I'm proud of myself. Okay, so uh, today's prompt, we're building an under... Uh, a uh, below the earth city, like underground city. Okay, done that before, so familiar territory. Uh, did we do this before? When did we do this before? Uh, the center of the earth. We did it. We did the center oh, yeah, of the earth. The earth was inside out. Yeah, that one. That's the one. Yeah, we did that one. This is a little bit different. Well, I'd hope so. Um, <laughs> like this one, people actually have access to the surface and everything. It's okay, like, yeah. I was thinking something like an uh, one of those plastic underground, hidden societies, maybe, like, hidden from the rest of the world sort of thing. Jurassic, uh, uh not Jurassic, um, Ice Age-like, with the... Yeah. Yeah? Kind of like Ice Age, I think. Or, uh, Al Journey to the Earth. Had something similar. Journey to the Center of yeah, the Earth I've, is also very similar. I've never that. seen, I've never seen, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth or... I was referring Fowl, to the book, but, but okay. Artemis Fowl has that? When did they... I think so. I don't I, know. I didn't I, make I, it I to the end of that series. Don't watch the movie. The books or seen it. Don't watch the movie. Uh, <laughs> it's anyway, not good. So, okay. So I saw a really cool concept art from a scrapped My Little Pony movie mm -hmm. from years ago, and it had an underground city. It looked really awesome, and I was like, you know what? Let's take this scrapped piece of artwork and just world build it. Build an entire world out of the scrap piece of artwork. And that artwork is in the thumbnail and it's on the screen now for people who want to see it. And it just looks awesome. It, it does and look it, awesome. Like, uh, for you who are listening at the other podcasting, I'm going to give a quick like description of this now that I'm seeing it because he has sent it to me. So pretty much what it is, it looks like a cave that almost looks like nighttime. Like It looks like there's stars dotted in the cave, which I'm going to assume are gemstones or something. There's a bright light behind the city, which could be the outside world or it could be a light source in the inside. And then there's a giant city that has tons of like neon lights on it. But they're softer. Like, this isn't Las Vegas neon lights. This is more... I don't know. I want to say, like, Arabian Nights. If they were neon lights. Kind of. Okay. Like, that's the vibe. But the architecture is definitely more medieval meets Arabia. It's kind of... That's what I'm feeling with neon lights. That's, yeah, I that's like, a good way to describe Yeah, that's, like, it. the only way... way yeah. It. Yeah, and then their, their city is sitting on top of a chasm or gorge or whatever you want to call it and there's bridges doing it and somehow they have decided to put like the castle piece directly on top of the big chasm so they've got a lot of guts I'll tell you that and then there's two <laughs> really cool creatures which I think will be fun to world build as well one which looks like an ant lizard and the other one that looks like a monkey but the tail is a snake and could be a second entity all to itself because that's how crazy this tail looks. Well, I'm pretty sure one of those silhouettes is supposed to be Spike, who is a dragon. Then what's up with the uh, tail? I'm not certain, though. <laughs> I'm not sure. It looks like a really weird version of a chimera. Yeah, well, we can more know, build it, like it into whatever... Yeah, I, that's what it... Yeah, but we can build that what we want, and I, th I think I described that pretty well. You can get the basic idea, and we're now gonna build a world based off of this picture. If you're still confused, you can click the link to the YouTube channel and, like, take a look at the image yourself, and then go back to listening to whatever device you want, or you can just trust our description, because I don't think I did too bad. I mean, it is, it's artwork worth seeing. It yeah, is it's really pretty. It is an amazing piece of artwork. Yeah. And, like, and for those who, uh, who are, for whatever reason, like, listening and are familiar with My Little Pony, just, just so happen to be both of those things, it looks a lot like Cantalot, but a million times cooler. Yeah, no clue what that is, but <laughs> oh yeah, let's turn this not into a My Little Pony world, but a world of our own creation based off a of painting. Because I think getting inspiration off of other stories and paintings is a cool way to world build. So let's demonstrate that by oh, yeah. doing that. Like I do that constantly. So I, like, I see a yeah, I see a cool element in someone else's world building or even just a picture or a phrase someone used and I said, yep, I'm going to use that in my world building. Yeah. 
So I honestly, I want to okay, so start first with the light in the background of the picture. So it's like this bright light. Because this is either the outside or they have like a mini sun or something in there. That's lighting up the back. Okay, so something I've noticed about the lighting in the back is it's also lighting up the gorge. Now, I can't tell if there's a second source coming from the gorge, mm. or if that's the light shining down into the gorge. Which do you think that is? Honestly, it almost... It, I'm pretty sure it's just the light kind of... Like, the light is a wall. Like, there's a wall back there producing light, and therefore it's pouring past all the openings, and the gorge is just an opening. Is what I think the picture okay, so is. Okay, it's the same light source. It yeah, it definitely off. looks like the same light source, but it also gives off the vibe that there's like a light waterfall happening, which is also a cool idea. Also, is the platform like? Is it on top of clouds? The ground looks very cloudy. It it kind of does. I thought it was rock, but it looks, oh, it looks very like airy. On it. I don't know. It looks very cloudy. No, I'm pretty lot. sure it's just the art style more so. Like the rocks are very smooth, yeah. but they also look very puffy. <laughs> So it almost, half of it doesn't. Half of it looks like rocks. Like the half where the two are standing on looks very rocky. But then there looks like there's a lot of clouds further away from the city. I mean, it, I'm trying to figure out what all of these lines are. I mean, actually, I mean, if you the, look, it looks yeah. like some of those lines do drift over and across it. So it looks like it is some sort of fog yeah. in there. Not all the lines are fog, but some of it looks like fog. Some of it looks like light patterns that are like shining on it. Yeah. Maybe from the buildings. And... Actually, if you look all around it, there are, you see all these weird shapes and lines all over the different buildings. Yeah. I, know, like, I don't know if those are related or what. I will say, like, the coolest part about this picture is definitely the lighting in general. Like, the lighting is what's selling this picture. Oh, yeah, is cool. the lighting is just magnificent. I, I almost... I would almost... I'm going to turn this into my wallpaper. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this as my wallpaper my desktop background like oh my god really looking at this i want to do that now <laughs> okay well because i'm looking at this and i it almost looks like the neon lights were ta like harvested from the cavern walls because you could see the same colors within the walls like the yellows and the blues and stuff and the neon lights almost look like a condensed like they took the lights out of the the cave walls and then created these really cool uh, they're outlining like windows pretty much and edges and stuff. They're like rims. They have lit up rims, which is fun. Okay, so what, so what they did was they just sort of like mined out uh, the walls and took these glowing rocks from the walls and just built the edges of their buildings out of it. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, why aren't it more worlds doing that? That's such a logical way to like use your cave light sources. Because uh, most worlds, when they have crystals and stuff, they're just like, oh, crystal, and they make light posts. But this is so much cooler. Yeah, it's it's like, a rock. Why not build out of it? Yeah. yeah, like, it, it's a perfectly good building material. Yeah, it's but super sturdy. Yeah, it's it's rock. It's a sturdy material. It's like a brick. So I think it's really cool how they've done that and how they have all the different colors represented in there. Honestly, it seems like what's really interesting to me is that blue is the most popular in the city, but it's the least popular in the wall. Which makes me think they have a favoritism in blue and have mined a lot of it out. Yeah, I mean, something I'm wondering about is we've got that massive light coming from the back. Yeah. Uh, is that light just one giant rock? Are they mining that rock, or is that something else? Oh, I didn't even think about that. So, like, they have... It looks like we've also got smaller blue rocks in the side and smaller speckles. Is that, uh, like, why they have so much blue light more than even yellow? Like, yellow's the second most popular, but blue's definitely the most popular. Is because their main light source in the back wall is blue. But also, they seem to be a good distance away from that wall, which makes me almost think they don't want to go close to it. Like, I don't see any well, infrastructure I mean, I think heading that in. It's kind of like uh, a constant sun. Yeah. And if you are over by there, you're going to constantly have daylight. It's going to be hard to sleep. You're not going to have any sort of areas of darkness. Yeah. But the like, thing this is, is, like. a very well lit up place. Yeah. The thing is, though, I see infrastructure heading away from the light source. I'm not seeing any heading towards it. Which makes me wonder well, if I they can't for a reason. Hmm? Well, look, there's some stuff in the back, in the background that's like right up against it. I don't know. I, I, it's hard to tell distance with paintings. 
Well, it definitely looks like buildings. Those things look like they're on clouds. So, for those who don't well, know what the picture like is. Actually, no. It looks like they're being built off of the side. Like, they've, they've got these platforms that are extending. Yeah. And the platforms the look man-made, the not... They're definitely man-made oh, yeah. platforms coming out of the wall. There's only two of them, for reference. Uh, they're, like, stone platforms. But what's weird about it is that the wall has, like, this dark blue color. And it almost looks like it's covering the platforms they've made. Like a moss. Have you noticed that? Like there's a little uh, layer, like almost like it's grass. I Especially that tall, that I one in the should, corner. It might just be the lighting, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's the way I'm looking at it, but it almost looks like the wall, whatever's on the wall is covering it like it's growing on it, the black stuff. There's no lights on it, but the black rock is growing on it while the underneath of it's gray. Because the light's shining directly on one of the ends, but you still have that clear black mark and then the gray. Could just be me, though. I'm looking at it for story yeah, elements. Because I, mean, uh, I, I, I just like I the I, just... I like the idea that, like, it's the wall itself, like, the covering of the wall is like a moss and it grows and it spreads and it's something they have to deal with. Yeah, maybe the, the moss is like an luminescent moss. And, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's growing. Or even, it almost makes it seem like instead of the rocks as stones, they could almost be flowers that they found a way to harvest and harden. Yeah, like, like uh, maybe if you just, like, condense it and everything, like, uh, just compress it all, you can basically get to a point where it becomes a solid uh Lock. I don't imagine it would be the strongest building material, though. Which could be why it's only uh, in the edges it, or, like, accenting, and it's not actually support beams. None of the light sources are support beams. They're all decorative. Yeah, like, they're probably, like, built on the outside or something, or, like, just built in the corner. They're not meant to actually support the structure. Yeah. Which explains why, like, they're, if you look at the picture, they're all pretty much around the edges or the corners and window frames and all that sort of stuff. They're not... Actually, they don't have, like, a full wall built out of it. But that yeah. also wouldn't look very good as well. True, yeah. And it might end up being too bright. Yeah, so, uh, so I think w how these people have made these lights is they have a moss thing growing on the roof that spreads and it grows the flowers that they condense into the light source. Uh, so that way they can constantly be harvesting it. It's not a finite source and they don't have to worry about running out of it, which could explain why they're, they feel so at liberty to use it. Because I know in a lot of the stories where they have these, like, crystal light sources, there's this huge concern of, like, harvesting and running out of them, so that there's, like, this idea you got to preserve them, because we only have so much, and then once they're gone, the world goes into darkness. And that's always a concern. But here, that's not a concern, so decorate your houses with them, have fun with it. Like, we can just grow so, more. So, do you think that they would, uh they have a problem with the moss being like like overrunning their city like it becomes sort of an invasive species where it just gets out of control and the entire city is suddenly covered in moss they have to constantly maintain the moss and clean it up push it back it could be uh, a fun story color. element I can't, like yeah, I you mean, want the moss because it's your light source but at the same time you don't want it because it keeps trying to grow all over your stuff I imagine they've got a system in place where they where they are harvesting it and turning it into building material, but if there's too much of it, they have a system to just push it back and kill it, or maybe they throw it into the gorge, I don't know. Or they uh, throw it into the gorge for the chance of it climbing back up. Yeah, I wouldn't want it in the gorge, because no. it doesn't look like it's in the gorge yeah. at all. No. Which we should probably ask the question, what is in the gorge? Nothing too dangerous if they're willing to build their castle on top of it. Yeah, I'm just thinking there's got to be something down there. That's too big of a bit of a element. It's, it looks just way too cool, way too interesting to not have something down there. Yeah, the thing is, it's a well-lit-up gorge. So it's not like a dark, creepy area of the cave. It's as well-lit up. It's as well-lit up as the rest of the cave. So, which, you know, is always an, another interesting element, because usually when you have, like, a gorge underneath something... It's always like, that's the dark and scary place no one goes to. But here, it's like, it's well lit. You could see what's down there. Like, yeah. They have bridges. You could stand on that bridge and look down, and you could see all the way down to the gorge and see what's at the bottom. I just don't... 
I don't know, what do you think would be at the bottom? Like, nothing too threatening, but also something that... It doesn't look like people are building down to it. So it can't be threatening okay. to them above, but it's threatening to you if you go down. I definitely think that's a sort of a scenario we're looking at. Um, maybe we can come back to that. And we might be able to come up with something through world building the two little creatures that we see in the oh, foreground yeah. of the picture. So one of them immediately, I can already tell you, it looks like Spike. It looks like a, a baby dragon. Except uh, it has a tail. Try... Is that Not a tail? Or is that a tail. separate entity? Uh, okay, so it looked, I thought it was thinking that it looked like uh, two creatures. One in this, like one is just sort of like almost wrapping around the center one, and the center one is Spike, the baby dragon. Oh, are we thinking that's actually the tail to the, the lizard creature, or the ant creature? I thought it was. It I might be. It it's a bit shaded, so... But that could be, you are right. I know, the tail almost looks like it has a face of its Actually, own. Actually, no. It doesn't look like this thing has a tail. It like, doesn't. It looks like it's got two legs on the back, but no Yeah, tail. what is this lizard no. like? It looks like, so it, it looks like a walking... Right it looks like a walking... Okay, for re those who don't know what this is, <sighs> it looks like a walking stick. But it's at a weird angle, like it's attached to one of the two creatures, but there's nowhere for it to be attached to them. So it looks like a snake, but it ends too soon. Like, it's just... It's kind of floating. It's a little weird. Like, there's no way for it to be standing up right now. Yeah, it is dark. Everything's dark over there. You can't see. Yeah. I... I don't... I don't know. Uh, do we want it to be part of one of the creatures, or do we want it to be a separate thing entirely? Do we want well, walking we sticks? a chimera. Because, like, chimeras have, like, snakes... For, ta for tails, and uh, they have a goat head, and uh, I've seen them interpreted with a lion head, and I've seen them interpreted with a uh, tiger head. This I, creature I, looks like an ant, and it's adorable. Yeah, it doesn't quite look like Chimera. We could build our own version of Chimera. I, I like this. I like that this creature looks like a cute ant. Yeah, like I, I don't, I don't even describe it as an ant. Almost like a dinosaur. I know its head just. Horns. I don't think. I don't think those are antennas. It looks like cords because they curve backwards. Oh, I just know. I'm just getting ant vibes because, for I think it was because when I first looked at it, I thought it had six legs, but it clearly only has four. But when I first looked at it, I thought it had six legs, and that they had little antennas, and the face is kind of like the pointed snout of like a, an ant. Like it's the same ant. It has an ant shaped head. Yeah, but it's got a long neck, and it's got what looks like spikes on its back. Yeah. So it might have like some sort of like a hard shell. Um, so, I can, this looks like a totally new creature. Like, this is a whole new fantasy creature we've got here. He's cute. Like, horns long. Like, it is! I mean, he's very cute. Like, he's blacked out. We have no idea what color he is, or even if he has color. Because he is a cave dweller. He might not have color. Because something to Like, yeah, he seems I'm... to be touring this other creature around. Like, this other creature is the guest. He... This is his home. I'm thinking that this, uh thing that we were thinking might be the tail is the tail just because if you look at the end of it it looks like it's got sort of like two different air sets of spikes making sort of a v-shape on it yeah at a point at the end like it almost like a like you might see on a yeah their spikes tail match tail. is what you're saying like the spikes at the yeah, end of the, the tail match, 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 the, match the back this is Plus it's got horns. okay well i think the tail is actually it having a really long tail like it's a ridiculous like the tail is twice the size of the lizard himself the creature himself uh, it's a ridiculously yeah. long tail i think almost makes sense because i think this creature is the thing that's building the city and having like it doesn't really have fingers but having a tail that's very flexible could explain how they're able to build something like this yeah, and would they be climbers? Would they be able to climb stuff? Because it doesn't look like they have fingers or anything, but uh, I can give maybe them fingers. they can use their tail in a way climb. I don't know. We could give them fingers if we wanted to. Or claws or something. Yeah, I was thinking, I'd almost... What you don't see, like, it looks like they have hooves, but they could have indents in those hooves that act like scoops, which help them, like, dig oh, out yeah. the moss and the crystals and, like, climb things. And if they're, like, sort of hollowed out, they could be used as almost, like, hooks to That's, climb up yeah. on rocks and stuff. So even though they don't actually have anything to grip with, these could still be climbing creatures. 
I I can imagine them actually in like the walls and of their city and stuff. You know, like how we have ladders that have rings and stuff. They could have like specialized, like they've dug out and hardened rocks and stuff where their hooves like click into them. Uh, and they can like use them, like say everyone in the city has like the same click, like the same hook, ho hove, uh, circle size. And or maybe yeah. like yeah, and they can or like hook into it. Same size. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that some size would different differentiate a little bit, but for the most part, they would have like a standard size that uh, pretty much anybody can use. May yeah. not fit everyone perfectly, but pretty much everyone can use it. Yeah, I mean, or there could like they could figure out like there could be a magnetism thing, which I don't know. If, I mean, their hooks could have like be slightly like lightly magnetized to the ground. I don't Not think lightly magnetized would be enough to climb walls. They would have well, they would still need the scoops, magnetized. but they would, yeah, they'd still need the scoops, so I think it would help them. Walking well, just seems like a pain at that point. Yeah, that's why I said lightly, but it was a suggestion, it was an idea. I mean, they also have their tails that they fall to catch themselves with. Yeah, the tails, it's like they got spikes that like basically dig into the uh Yeah, I bet those wall, things... Like, wrap around something. Yeah, I think those things could, like, tunnel dig too yeah and I think that if, yeah, that uh, just for like maybe some sort of a self defense or a setup if they find some sort of creature in the gorge that they don't want to uh, to come across that it acts as a weapon yeah and they've got horns so these would different and a spiky shell like these are definitely combat capable creatures no yeah, yeah I wouldn't want to fight these guys and it, plus like with that shell if it is spiked like if something tries to eat them, they've got a, they got a problem. They got that shell to get through. Yeah, I definitely like, would man. say these guys are scaled. They're they're not. Yeah, yeah, like, they, they're is, reptilian. Yeah, and I remember like there is a type of dinosaur. I can't remember its name that has like a shell like that. Um, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I don't know what it's spice. called. Yeah, but like this is it's definitely giving me that sort of dinosaur vibes where I'm just I just keep on thinking of that dinosaur. Like, these are highly... This seems to me, the more I'm looking at it, this is a highly combat-capable creature. And it's also extremely intelligent. I mean, just look at the city they've created and, like, how they've harvested the lights and they've tamed the, uh... They've tamed back the moss and now they're actually... They're at the point where they're ready to expand into the walls by creating new platforms. Yeah, Which, so yeah. what I'm thinking is now that, they, they've, uh, now that we've uh, got these guys developed we can create basically the perfect threat for them. So what would be living in the gorge that would be such a threat to these highly combat-capable creatures that even they wouldn't go down and face it? I, know. I think the important thing is those creatures aren't can't climb. That's the thing that's keeping them down the gorge. They can't get up the walls. Yes. So yes. that's that's important. Well, that, so these aren't flying creatures. They're not climbing creatures. But they have something that's a weakness to these highly intelligent, very, on they, they they look very cute, but they would kill you the moment you turn your back if you're not careful, type creature. Okay, so something I'm thinking is if they've got that shell on the back, um, I'd say like their underbelly, their neck, uh, maybe they are still vulnerable, and their legs might still be vulnerable. Their yeah. head, they've at least got the horns. Their tail is also a weapon. Yeah. So it's mostly stuff from that comes from below that I think could, could kill them. So maybe a burrowing creature? Yeah. But at the same time... Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. They, they can't burrow to the top because maybe it's all this rock and they can't burrow through rock. But they could perhaps burrow at the bottom because maybe the bottom is actually a soft dirt. Oh, okay, yeah. I can I can buy that. Okay, so the, the bottom is made of like a loose dirt, and so they burrow around there. And if you go to the bottom, these things might be able to quickly jump up through the dirt and bite their stomachs and start attacking them. From I know when you said that, Are I almost I was creatures? I don't know I was thinking poisonous porcupine. <laughs> Why? Why poisonous porcupine? Like, with, like they've got the quills, but there's poison in them, and they can like jump, like they can uh expand their quill so they can burrow and like keep the quills down so they don't bother them while they're burrowing and stuff and it can also help with like the dirt running back off them and not not 
you know, and not encrusting on them and stuff. And then when they they feel threatened, these creatures can then, like, puff up, like a puffer fish almost. Uh, and their quills come up and they can stab into the underbellies of these lizard creatures. And they're poisoned, so once you're hit, you're kind of then, your, your, day, your days are numbered. I like that. Yeah. I think that's like... a good one. I feel like maybe they should be a little bit more threatening. Because right now it seems like they're just sort of like a much a very passive, like, watch your step sort of thing. I feel like this should be something that deters people from going down, like, at all to the point where it's like, uh, they will actively attack you. Yeah. No, these are hostile um, creatures. They they hunt you. Okay, yeah, but yeah, so yeah. just Sorry, let me re clarify that. These are these are creatures where if you go down there and they sense you, I mean maybe they like to eat these guys. Uh yeah, I mean if you like have those quills and sort and you impale them enough, they might die. Yeah. Like they could die. Uh and then that's how that might be how they hunt. They hunt in like swarms or packs or whatever. That sounds horrifying. And uh yeah, like, these, uh, these guys would be vicious, because, like, even my if these are, like, porcupines, where they're covered in quills, and they just thrust, like... Uh, so I want to clarify, I want to clarify, this is the porcupines where they keep their quills after they stab you, they're the ones where they're embedded in their skin, these aren't the ones where they leave it in. Yeah. Yeah, you don't I walk away with 800 they're... quills. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's, like, a chance that one or two could be ripped out and left behind, uh, maybe it's something kind of like hair, where it's like it's rooted into yeah. uh, your skull, but like you can still pull it out, and some might be. You, well, that's how those type of porcupines work. They do occasionally drop it. Yeah, and maybe I think it's kind of like that, but a lot stronger. And so there's a chance that a couple might be left in the victim, yeah. and they can continue to leave to do uh, inject poison into yeah. the victim over time if it's not removed. Honestly, though, I think this is an interesting like story idea would be if they say they want to expand into the gorge but they need to take care of this threat but and they think a great way to start would be to find like an anti-venom to their uh, poison or anti-poison a cure essentially but in order to do that in order to get a cure you need the poison first so what they need is a bunch a group of brave individuals who won't just they don't just go down there they have to go down there and distract the quills somehow of these creatures and bring them up still alive. I imagine one of the first things that they would implement is belly armor. Like just yeah. something on their stomach to protect them. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, something I'm immediately thinking of is like that sounds like a really cool, really interesting story, but there's a very simple solution to this problem dump a bunch of rocks down in the gorge. Mm. Problem solved. They can't. They have no more dirt. They can't burrow. You you just crushed a bunch of them. Yeah. So what's to stop them from just p uh, pouring rocks into the gorge? I almost wish it had something to do with like the main light source. Okay, crazy idea. So in s <laughs> all right, okay. Instead, so this main light source, instead of it, like, being a solid thing, what if the light that we're seeing is actually, like, that mud substance? So it's not just coming from the back of the wall, it's also coming up from the gorge. This is the thing the porcupines burrow in. And it's actually a lighter light okay, source so than we stronger. think. Like, it's not blinding you. Yeah, maybe it's uh, it's much softer yeah. than rock, right? It, like, it, it's not, it maybe almost like a gel? I don't know. Yeah. So this way, if they were to dump a bunch of rocks into the gorge, they would be blocking off light source out of the gorge. They'd lose some of their light. Which you might not think is a big deal, because they have that big back wall of light. But it could be maybe that big back wall is slowly eroding down into the gorge, because it's softer. Well, it could also be that uh, it, it hurts um, maybe the, the part of the city that's in front of the castle because if you look behind like it, the, that castle's got to be casting a massive oh, shadow oh yeah that could explain and why there's no shadow actually is because it's coming out from the gorge as well yeah and they, they've also just lit up the city a whole bunch of different True. areas so like I think that the like uh, they add lights to one just for aesthetic but two to light up smaller areas that the gorge can't reach yeah. And they do have the option of lighting up literally everything, 
but they might be thinking, well, that's just, you know, a, a whole ton of work and a lot of resources and a lot of transportation. It, it would just take forever. Uh, let's not do it. Let's just line up where we need to. The Gorge will act as our necessary light. It's, it's kind of like the equivalent of us. Um, for whatever reason, blocking out the sun and then trying to light up the Earth. Yeah. That's kind of what it's like. Like, yes, we have light and we could do it. But we... But why? If we have the option of the sun, we're gonna take the sun. Yeah. Which does... Yeah. Uh, which would mean that they can't just dump rocks into the bottom of the coil and, like, to kill these guys because they don't want to... Also, there's a chance that these yeah. creatures can just dodge the rocks because they'll see them coming. Or they're embedded yeah, they enough the where the science. rocks won't bother them. And that's a lot of rocks, guys. It's a lot of rocks. Yeah, and the size of the rocks, the, the size of the rocks, like, in the gorge, uh, before they reach the bottom, could be a, maybe an optimal location to be harvesting uh, the, uh, some stone that, that glows. Yeah. Like, and so that's another reason where it's like, if we fill up the gorge, suddenly that reduces the amount of light we have to work with while we're mining. If they travel far away from the, the city... The further they travel from it, the less uh, stuff they have, uh, like, like the less light they have, because okay, so what happens is if they travel further from the city and the gorge is locked off, they have no light, like, at all. The gorge I mean, is the main source of light when they leave the city. And another fear they could actually have is the moss spread. Like, if you put the stones in there, that means the moss can start growing from underneath them. And suddenly, not only do you... It's easier to deal with them when they're, like, coming above and, like, across. But now you have them trying to poke through underneath. And this moss could become a threat to, like, the foundation of the city if they're not careful. Which could be, honestly, why they built over the gorge. Because it's an area where the moss can't really grow because of the gorge's light. Ah, uh, yes. So they like, maybe like they even have a lot of the support, possibly on like stilts and stuff, because they know if the moss starts uh, starts growing up on the stilts, they can stop it before it gets too bad. Because it could be like maybe this moss, this uh, this light dirt is like an anti turrent to the moss. Like the moss doesn't want to go near it; it rather spread to other places. So this is the reason why they can have the city here. They need the gorge. They need the light. And a side effect of that is they have these dangerous creatures underneath. Don't fall off the bridge. I mean, the fall would probably kill you anyways. But, like, don't go down. <laughs> yeah, and again, like, yeah, I think you get some interesting stories where maybe somebody is mining the side of the, uh, the walls in the gorge. And then someone falls. And it's like, oh, no, legs broken, can't climb, rescue mission, go. Yeah, I mean, I f this feels like, uh a horror story waiting to happen. I was like, thinking fun fantasy adventure. No, I mean, you've got this moss that I feel like can be destructive to foundations creeping in over on the sides. You have these poisonous hedgehogs, uh, well, porcupines, <laughs> racing around the bottom of the gorge ready to, like, sneak attack kill you at any moment. And then we have okay, a new I, visitor. I yeah. I think a lot of the ideas you come up with would work for sort of a horror story, but the aesthetic doesn't really work for horror, if you ask me. So I'd say, like, fun fantasy adventure with a lot of intense moments and I know, quite I love, possibly a lot of violence. I know, I've re still, okay, like, I've, I've been reading a lot of H.G. Wells, and H.G. Wells' stories are an awful lot like this, where you have this dramatic, often beautiful landscape and then there's horror elements within them. Like, this seems like it maybe... Th that's probably why I just finished the book. This is an H.G. Well horror story, like, in a nutshell right here. Like, you have a... You have terrestrials. You have, like, advanced civilization versus, like, a less advanced civilization. But the more advanced fears the lesser. Uh, and you have, like, the environment creeping in to destroy... Like, this is an H.G. Wells horror story. Yeah, I'm... I'm a fan of uh, this world so far. And I, again, I think it could work either way with the horror story format or the more fun fantasy adventure story. I'm adventure. just pushing for... Okay, I'm more. just pushing for the horror because we don't normally build horror worlds. Like, I think this is our first proper horror world, we, even if if we do decide to claim it as one. This is would be, like, the first one we've ever done. And I have to say, like, horror can be fantasy. Like, you can have a, ha a fantasy horror world. They can live together. And that's definitely what this would be. It's both. If you do go the horror route. 
It could just be a fantasy adventure, like a suspenseful one, but if you want to go full horror, it doesn't lose its fantasy title because of that. Like, it can't. This is, it's firmly rooted in the fantasy realm. Yeah, like, and I think this would be really interesting because uh, I'm a fan of stories where you have, like, basically animals with human level intelligence. Yeah, and those I'm are not fun. talking about like uh like for something like Zootopia or Disney's Robin Hood where they're like anthropomorphic animals where they're like very human like. But I'm talking like animals uh with human intelligence where they are fully animal, it's just they speak and they they're like and they're smart. And they build but and I also create. but something I like even more is when you have like these sort of fantasy creatures. These fantasy uh the, uh, animals with human level intelligence because you can add in all of these different unique features to them like this tail and these hooves that can climb up walls and all these different things and then you can get some really interesting stories out of it and you can do some even more world building like how does all of this sort of stuff reflect their society like for example we have stairs and they might also have stairs but some places might have a wall that you are expected to climb to get from point A to point B. They it's have not rock very walls. Handicap friendly. They have yeah, wall, it's not rock very walls. Friendly, but yeah. I love the idea that they have wa- rock walls like all over the place, like j- jungle stem style rock walls for them to climb. Yeah, that just for an idea me. of like how this affects the world building. I want to give an example of our world. Our world is built for people to use and access stuff with hands. Yeah. Like, our keyboards are designed, on their computers are designed with hands in mind. Uh, smartphones are designed with, like, tapping and swiping with fingers in mind. Our steering wheels and cars, they're meant to be gripped by hands. You know, these are the sorts of things where our world is built for humans. Even something as simple as a doorknob is built for humans. A dog cannot open a door well, most of the time some can but some are skilled not easily and uh, even then it's only like the latch ones that can't open the the round ones yeah like we are like everything is built for humans so how does something how does a creature having a tail like this and hooves and horns and all these different things affect their uh world and their society I, I think we, we tried to do something similar a while back by building a world where we replaced the uh where we replaced the humans in the world with dragons. Mm-hmm. It didn't go very well, but I, know, I think it was. I think uh, it was this interesting. Going well. Okay, yeah, no, like I, I have. I feel like I have to defend this this world every time with Isaac. But like, I feel like that world just is a. If you want, like, an episode where we discuss like the details, like the small things, like use how using a door changes, how using stairs changes, how like sleeping changes how like basic things that we take for granted changes when the character you're working with changes shape and like how hands and if they have wings or not then i would honestly recommend listening to our dragons replace humans world because i think we did a good job of showing like how how much extra work it is to do that and how you have to think of details you didn't think you'd have to think about or things we take in granted in most of our stories nowadays. And it's the same with, like, these lizard people. You're going to have to go through with that. Like, you're going to have to go and say, okay, we have these detailed structures. How did they shape them? How did they carve out the rock? Well, they used their tails and their hopes to dig and stuff. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Okay, how did they hold certain things in place? And I'm like, oh, their mouths are probably pretty good at gripping, too. And then they could, like, use their hand as hammers to, like, drive nails in. And you're like, okay, well, how did they make the nails without fingers? Like, how did they shape those? And you have to, like, go through all those things because they don't have fingers. And that's that's yeah, some- you could try and come up with alternatives to things like nails and uh, this stuff. Like if if we didn't have hands and we instead had hooves or claws or whatever, what building materials would we use? Yeah, you know that sort of thing. But um, you have to it, keep it, it, those things in mind because it's a people see like nails because that it's honestly it's a thing that takes me out of a lot of worlds especially movies is when i watch a movie and i see these new creatures but their world is built exactly how humans would build it i'm like nah no that's not possible just they can't do that they they don't have the ability just remember a tiny bunny rabbit cannot wield a hammer 
their paws just can't do it. Like, even if it's a tiny hammer, they can't wield a hammer. That's not how bunnies work. Exactly. So, like, we want explanations for it. And we don't... Not to, like, boggle people down with, like, details, but even... It's... Honestly, it's really cool how this works. If you just give, like, say the nail thing, you explain the nail thing of how they do that, you can get away with not explaining any other way they built anything. And people will buy it because you took the time to explain how the nails work. It's yeah, amazing it's like, like that. Okay, they figured out... Like they figured out how to build stuff without hands, and it's like and it's, it's, it's like okay, so there's they probably got like solutions for everything else in this world how they do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, that's and they'll really just cool. accept well, it. That's really interesting. Yeah, you only have to really explain one and not the rest. And my recommendation is to explain the one that's most important to the story. Like if you have one of your creatures being the apprentice to a blacksmith, explaining how the, who who like specializes in making nails. Explaining that one would be really cool, and then we could see it, and people would be like, Oh, so, okay, so them getting, like, giant slabs and stuff wouldn't be... Or if you have a miner, and they're explaining how they get the giant pieces of rocks and how they fit them into place. And then you don't really need... Then at that point, you don't need to explain the nails, because we're like, well, if they can do that without hands, then, you know, finding a way to keep them together, I'm sure, was easy for them. And stuff like that. So you don't have to explain them all. You just need to pick one, explain it really well, and the readers will believe you on the rest. It's great. Yeah, now something I want to add on to this is if you are going to create a world where, you, where like, hands um, are not a thing and you've got some other form of them uh, uh, navigating the world, if you're going to do that, go all the way and don't, like... Uh, don't like say is uh, okay. So I'm gonna give you a pretty bad example of something that happened recently. So uh, let's go back to my favorite punching bag. I knew um, this, this was happening. New, my what? <laughs> I saw this coming. Continue. <laughs> the new My Little Pony movie. Uh, so they introduced cell phones, like smartphones, into the world in this uh, new series, and. So the thing is, a lot of people are like, wait, how are they picking up the smartphones? They have hooves. And then they're like, oh, they have little, like, hooks and little slots on the back of their phone cases to slide their hooves into so that they can securely hold on to them. That's smart. It's so nice that they added that little detail so that they could hold on to the, uh, hold on to the phone, no problem. But then, the thing is, that's the only part of the show where they have anything like that, where the world has changed for them to operate it with hooves, because every single time they go to pick something up, their hoof just sticks to it. Like their hoof, their hoofs are covered in, in invisible glue. One of the an, like one of the animators said that uh, they were Velcro hooves, and when they first started out, they had this conversation pretty early on. How are they gonna pick stuff up? And they said that they just decided Velcro hooves. So what this tells me is that early on, they considered this problem. They added in that little bit for the phone. And then they said, you know what? It's too much work for us to try and come up with answers to everything. Let's just ignore it because no one will notice. Newsflash, everyone noticed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because... one of the first things I noticed. Yeah, you definitely need to be consistent. So, like, I, I think we'd be more okay if that phone thing never existed. If it would, they just Velcro hooved everything, yes. you would just accept it. But the fact is, they didn't for this one thing, but they did for everything else. Or, they did for this one thing and didn't for everything else is confusing. It doesn't it make sense. very annoying. Yeah, I'm and like, it bugs you. All the way one way or all the way the other. Yeah, yeah. And, be and consistent. It looked like they had, like, uh, they had, like, a big easy-to-press button on a lamp in the background. They never touch the lamp, but the button is there, and it's easy to press. It's very hoof-friendly. They don't have, like, a little tiny chain that you have to reach up and go searching in the under the lampshade to find. They don't have a little, tiny little button in there or anything. No, it's a giant button that a hoof can clearly press. So it seems like they started off with this idea of making the world so that hooves could operate in it, and then they just didn't finish. They yeah. just gave up on it. And so now you've got this really bad contrast 
where they, they say, uh, oh yeah, they show over here, oh yeah, the world's designed for hooves, but then they show over here, no, it's definitely designed for hands. Yeah. So, this world is definitely one where you can't, it's, it's not designed for hands. And you have to keep that in mind constantly. And it's a new train of thought, and I think it's honestly why having animals be the main character of stories is such a rare thing. Like, it's not, there's not many of those in the world. Like, compared to the number of books, the number of books where, like, animals are the main character, and most of those are children's stories where children are more lenient to those things. Like, I I think a really good example, though, of how this is pretty well done is Owls of Galhul. Owls of Galhul oh, oh, yes. does I, this I saw, so freaking well. Okay, so I saw the uh, the uh, the movie, and I was very impressed by how they did that. I I was not impressed by really anything else in the movie, and uh, according to you, yeah, the, but, the movie was not no. great. The movie just not no. I will admit, book. the movie did the, get that from transfer. the book. It did, yeah, the like movie... That, that was really cool. That was done really well. And the weapons! I loved the weapons! No, and they... they added the, like, the bladed talons. It was so cool. I yeah. loved it. And they also explain how they make the weapons as owls, uh, how they get, like, the coals, how they start fire. Like, all of it is explained. This isn't done by humans. This is all done by owls. Like, the main feature of the story, it's not a spoiler because it's, like, a huge feature in this book, is that the coals, they can't produce their own fire. They don't have any way to do that. They have to get live coals from, like, fires, lightning storms and stuff, and then preserve those coals. And it's really, co- it's a really cool world building element. Uh, and they also show how like they can farm and they harvest things all as birds with talons and beaks. Like this, they do human things and stuff. And a lot of things they have to use remains from humans, like glass, glass work just isn't something they can do. And they admit that there are some things these creatures can't do, and therefore they just don't do it. And I think that's so cool of this series to take an animal and actually make the animal do animal things. But do, like, and remake the world as if these animals are intelligent beings capable of doing things. And their world isn't a human world. It's an owl world. And that, I love that. I love it a lot. And I think it's, and I think Owls of Galhul is a, if you're planning on doing this in your own series where you have a creature that's very different from humans and therefore would cause the world to be very different because of that, I think reading Owls of Galhul, the movie's just bad. But it does a good job in that, so if you want to watch the movie, then go ahead. But read the book series. It's They're really short. They're middle school level. They're very easy to read, and they're very enjoyable. I love the series. I've read it all. Uh, so I would recommend the Owls of Girl Wool series like very, very highly for as a prime example of how to do this. It's a good example. I tried looking up uh, audiobook. I couldn't find like, any good audiobooks on uh, Owls of Gahul. I, I might just uh, just buy books outright. Honestly, you um, could get it's a big book series, and you can get it all for like thirty bucks on some sites. Ooh. Like it's not bad. I think I paid thirty for mine. Nice. Yeah, so you can you can get it pretty because it's middle school level and mass produced and paperback. You can get them, pre- and I think they're still in production, so you can get them pretty cheap. Yeah, so I I really. Basically, I just really want to see more stories done with uh, animals like this as a main protagonist with like no humans. Like uh, unlike something like the horse and his boy from Narnia, yeah. where they have animals, human levels, and intelligence, but like, but they also have humans. I don't want humans at all. Yeah. I want like more stories with no humans in a fantasy world. Give that to me, please. I don't know about you. But that's what I want. I want more of that. Yeah, no, I wholly agree. And I think this is a really cool idea for a world with that. Like, this is not a human world. This is the lizard people's world. Yeah. And And that's great. I've been doing some uh, writing where the world has no humans. It's all animals. Some of them are fantasy creatures. Some of them are non-fantasy creatures. And it is... I have found it to be a challenge. It's so hard. Yeah. And a lot of what I found is like is something that works well is just having different animals perform different roles. Like some animals can do things that others can't. Okay, another recommendation and like, for uh, the prime example of that. So C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy, the first one in that book series, 
he has what you describe, where a bunch of animals do very different things. There's no humans. They're all like weird space creatures. Uh, and each of them do their own tasks because their bodies are made to do that task and they help each other because of that. It's a good example. I would recommend that one too as another like prime example of how to do this. Mind you, I will warn you, the ma this is a character of humans entering into that world. Like that's the story premise. But, so the main character is still human, but the world itself is created purely by non-human creatures. Like, they're not even human-like. They're weird creatures, but they're cool, and I love them. You know what? I, w I want to say something. Like, I know that uh, the, our worlds, they're free to use. You can take these ideas, and you can make a story with them. You can use them in your own stories and movies, shows, books, whatever it is you're doing. Uh go ahead and take these worlds and stuff that we're building, but I do kind of want to use this one element of this creature that we've built, because I'm putting, I'm world building a bunch of uh, new fantasy creatures that haven't been done before, and putting them into my book, and this one is so unique and so cool, I might just, just take this element from a world that we've created and use it. Oh uh, yeah, I think, you know, our stuff is free use, and that also means we can freely use it. <laughs> yes. I like, I feel like if our elements show up in our book, that doesn't, like, of anything, like, it has more right to be in our books, because we created it first, but at the same time, like, if someone else wants to use this character, these, this animal in their story, they can still. Like, we're not denying you the use of that, but it just means, no, that chances are this creature's gonna be in Star's book, or in Isaac's book. And Isaac did create it first. So, just be warned about that. So, it is a good warning. Like, oh, I might be using this creature, by the way, guys. Just so you know. Feel free to still use it, but know that I'm using it first. Or I will have first yeah, claim on it. pretty much everything else. I'm not going to be using, like, anything in any of the worlds that we are creating. But this one thing, I just might take. Because I love world building uh, new creatures. And it's so hard to world build something that's so unique and different and it hasn't been done before. Now I just gotta come up with a name for it. <laughs> Comic section hell. We are terrible at coming up with names for creatures, so yeah. I guess we'll leave it off at that before this uh this the podcast gets bad. Like we're on such a good roll. I yeah. don't wanna stop it. We're ending it here. Yeah, I no, I wow, Isaac is ending the podcast. The this is a first. I always end it, so Isaac is ending it. This is a first. I'm surprised, but uh, I'm okay. I, do. I don't know where to go beyond this. No, no, um, I think we're good. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, we, yeah. yeah, join us next week where we'll, we, uh, we'll have a world building basics. We have a really cool one planned that we're both very excited about. Uh, and then, of course, after that, we will have tons of new worlds we will be creating from tons of fun prompts. But yeah, we will, we'll see you guys then. Bye. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> Heh <laughs>